We're on holiday in the Isle of Wight and we're visiting Parkhurst Forest which is a large wooded area, lots of pine trees here and I'm hoping that means we might get a glimpse of the red squirrel which is the only kind of squirrel they have on this island. It hasn't been outcompeted by the grey squirrels that we have back home. Now, here we've got evidence of red squirrels. This is very characteristic of the way red squirrels consume the seeds out of pine cones. They split the pine cone right down the middle and then eat the seeds out of it. So the signs are good. However, we've got the dog with us, so she might scare them off before we see them. Still, let's have a look. While we're here, let's just have a look at this. Can you see that insect down there? That, I believe, is a lacewing. It looks like a very large aphid, but in fact, it's a predator of the aphids. Let's just have a look at some things that are a bit different. This is an oak tree, but it's not the regular English oak. I'm not even really sure what species this is. I'll look it up, and if I can identify it, I'll put it on the video. I'll put a text description of this oak tree up on the video. If you're watching this bit and there is no text description, that means I was not successful in identifying it, and perhaps you'd like to tell me in the comments what you think it is. And growing right next door to that oak tree, here we've got sweet chestnut. And sweet chestnut will be a favourite of the red squirrel when the chestnuts are in season. I'm really hoping that we will see red squirrels somewhere, even if only in the distance today. But we'll see. As I say, I've got the dog with me today, and she's likely to scare them off before we get to them. They're a bit more shy than the grey squirrel. Down here, we've got a species of bramble. Now, I don't know whether this is... It looks a little bit big, actually, for ordinary blackberries. I have a feeling this is dewberries. Much larger flowers than a regular bramble, and a bit more regular, which I suppose is actually similar to the form of the fruit. And it's a low growing plant, but as you can see, it's growing in amongst, this is a regular bramble, much more thorny. The dewberry is a bit more bristly than thorny. Of course, no berries yet, just flowers, but the bees are enjoying them. And up here, gorse. We've looked at gorse before, and we made gorse flower tea in a previous video. This gorse has finished flowering, and here we've got the seed pods which are just starting to ripen. These little downy pea pods. And these little pods will wait until there's a sunny day and they will burst open explosively. When you walk amongst gorse on a hot sunny day in the summer, it's like listening to Rice Krispies. Popping, snapping, all the little seeds being catapulted out of the exploding seed pods. A bit later in summer, maybe we'll see if we can capture that event on video. Now, if we look down here on the forest floor, we can see ants. And these are wood ants. They're the largest species of ant we have in the UK. Eva, don't stand still in the ants, please, you'll get bitten. And let's just follow these big ants and see if we can figure out where they're going to. So let's follow them up here. Here we go. This is the ant's nest. So this is a wood ant nest and it's made of chiefly pine needles and pieces of debris that the ants have collected and gathered and brought back here. I'm not going to stand still too long because these ants do bite. However, you know, I'm leaving them alone. By and large, they're just ignoring me. I'm just a piece of the scenery to these guys. Wood ant nests are apparently an interesting phenomenon because they have multiple queens that live inside the nest. But let's just have a look. You can actually see down here, you can see a number of little tunnels going into the inside of the nest where they're bringing back all of their food, which is caterpillars, insects, various other bits of edible debris and forage 
and they'll be taking it in there to feed their pupae and larvae. And they really don't seem to mind being too close together. So we've got one ant's nest there. That's the one we just looked at. And right here, we've got another one. And I suspect we'll probably find there more and more around here. They really don't seem to mind being each other's neighbours. We're still in the same bit of tangled old woodland here, but this bit's mostly spruce. And these will be planted, these trees, and it's, it'll be part of the Forestry Commission's uh, management of the land. So every now and again they'll come and harvest these trees and they'll be used for timber or for wood pulp. And then standing in the middle of this mixed forest here where we've got a bit of spruce that's going to be harvested, we've got a bit of birch, a bit of mountain ash, a lot of other mixed deciduous, some hazel there, sweet chestnut. We have this mighty Scots pine. Look at that. Obviously this one is a specimen tree that the Forestry Commission has decided not to cut down and so this one's being preserved. And look at that tree. It's not the tallest tree in the world but look at that. I bet the red squirrels, which we still haven't yet seen, really love that tree. Now here we've got a bit where it does look like destruction. This is where the heavy machinery that they use to harvest these logs has come through here, has churned up the path, really, really dug up the soil and upturned the clay and has left what appears to be really quite a chaotic mess. But let's just have a quick look down here because in this water, nature is finding opportunities. And so we've got little, I think they're probably mosquitoes actually, but those mosquitoes are gonna be food for birds and other insects. And so even though this is the chaos and churn of industrial forestry, nature is finding a way here. It's just a place where water can collect and actually wildlife is loving it. And I imagine probably birds come down here to drink as well. Right, we've just seen a red squirrel. I've got Eva on the lead now because I want her not to disturb it. It's apparently up in this tree here. Whereabouts? You see it? Yeah. Do you see it? Oh, I thought you seen a real one. Seriously? <laughs> it's a sculpture of a squirrel. I thought you said you'd seen a real one. Seriously? <laughs> Alright, as we were. So that's a cedar tree up there. Another favourite of the red squirrels. Let's keep looking. I think I'm probably hoping a little bit too much that we will see a real live red squirrel today. Just because they are such shy, retiring, reclusive little creatures. So coming up to what here is a red squirrel hide. Now it looks like this is intended for a feeding station and observe to see if we can see the red squirrel. However, I think we're probably not going to be in luck today because I've got the dog with me. It's the middle of the day. I've got a lot of people around. I think we're probably not going to see anything, but I'll sit here for a little while and see what we see. So that's what we're actually looking for. That's a picture of the red squirrel. And these two maps here show us these two maps here show us the distribution of the red, of the red versus grey squirrel. So this one, in 1945, the grey squirrel occupied this area. 2010, grey squirrel has completely taken over, apart from where we are today, which is the Isle of Wight. I do happen to know there are a couple of other little places like Brownsea Island, 
and a few other places like up here in Wales. Of course in Scotland the red squirrel still has the advantage over grey squirrels because it's better adapted to pine forests. And we've come across here a little rather muddy forest pond and what have we got here? Look just down there dragonflies mating. Hopefully you can see that. Dragonflies locked head to tail. I think we're just about to witness. Yeah, there we go, look. I don't know if you can actually see that. But that is a pair of dragonflies there. Okay. No doubt there will be frogs, perhaps newts, in this little pond. It looks a little bit muddy. I can see water skaters on the surface of the water. I can see water boatmen. They are not the same thing. These here, <coughs> not the same as pond skaters. These are water boatmen. These water boatmen actually, they look like they're on the surface of the water, but they are underneath the surface of the water. And they swim down, they live underneath, and they're waiting for a flying insect to land on the surface of the water, or actually to come close enough, and they will grab it and consume it. Those are water boatmen. I think that's the first time I've seen as many of them in one place. We can get a closer view of one of them. Oh, they tend to disappear when they think when they feel threatened. There we go. Here's a lovely little wildflower that we see quite a lot alongside forest trails. This is bugle. Lovely little blue flowers there. Uh, it's a relative of thyme and sage all of those plants. Just let's spend a moment just admiring the detail of those little flowers. Now down here we've got the common spotted orchid. It's called the common spotted orchid because it's got spots on the leaves. Now we had a look at this in a previous video quite recently. This is growing in a little damp valley. Let's just get a close look at the flowers. There we go. Now right next to it is what I think is just a white version of the same thing. I'm not sure, really. No spots on the leaves, but then no purple coloration at all. So I don't know if this is just a mutated common spotted orchid with no purple pigment in it, or if it's a completely different species really not sure but there it is so there's a purple orchid and a white orchid right next to each other slightly sunnier spot here and we can see the gorse pods are a little bit more ripe these ones here will probably pop in the next few days they're drying out and turning dark and they will turn dark brown and then they will explode. But there's no evidence that any of these have actually exploded yet, so I think we're still a little bit early in the season to witness that. So I'll take you out another time and we'll go and witness the uh, interesting phenomenon of the gorse pods popping. And here we've got another wood ant nest. And this one, I think where it's in the warm sunshine, the ants are very, very active. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that on the video, but that's a seething mass of life. So sadly we didn't see any red squirrels on our trip today. However, it's good to know that they're here. Look at all this evidence of squirrels eating pine cones. So we're just heading back to the car park now. So thanks for joining me on this woodland walk in hunt of the red squirrel today. We are gonna look elsewhere and in different times of the day for the red squirrel, so we might be lucky. If I succeed in spotting 
red squirrels while I'm here on the Isle of Wight, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon.